Good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in for uh, Uti Newt's uh, EJ Welch seminar here today. We're going to be talking about our, our shower systems and, and focusing in on a handful of products. You have myself and uh, Jared Lockwood going to be presenting the day. We're going to give a few more minutes here for everybody to jump on. But uh, thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time today. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started, Jared. Utsin offers more, guys. We, uh, we really do try to make the as easy as possible for our contractors, distributors, everyone involved with products, making their life easier and everything faster. Um, my name is Nick Durr. I'm the technical services manager for Tylen Stone. Uh, there is my contact information if you do need to reach out to me. I've been in the Tylen Stone world for about 20 years. Uh, worked at a few other manufacturers, distribution as an and as a commercial contractor in my previous life. Uh, I've been able to call Utsin home for the last about eight months now and uh, I'm really excited about the products we have in the Talon Stone range and everything that we have coming as well. Jared, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Sorry, I was muted. Um, <laughs> so, hey, uh, I've been in the flooring industry about 20 years. I have a background in uh, ceramic installation, and um, I've been with Utsin for about five years. So I cover um, north, north, northern Indiana, Michigan, and northern Ohio. Awesome, thank you. All right, Utsin Uts, we are a global company based in Ulm, Germany. We've been around for almost a hundred years in the U.S. for about 15. We have manufacturing in Dover, Delaware, and Germany, and we're so excited to announce that we are building a plant in Waco, Texas, that we have, uh, hopefully will be open uh, in next year. So today we're gonna focus on a handful of our products, and this by no means is anything, everything we have, but it is a, a great start. We're gonna focus on building a traditional three-piece shower, uh, and then I'm gonna say three-piece, it's a three-piece drain. We're gonna be referencing uh, TCNA manual B421, what we call a divot method, and we'll be focused on the Utsin PE360 Plus primer, the NC182 uh, sloping mortar, low slump patch, the HS100, and then we'll focus on some of our thin sets at the end, uh, mainly our CX30. I don't know if I was muted that whole time. I apologize. So we're going to focus on all those products, guys. We're going to go through the uh, drain there. And Jared? Yeah, so first thing we're going to touch on is the PE360 Plus. So this is an acrylic primer uh, just for absorbent surfaces. Normally, we're using this over the surface of uh, concrete or gypcrete. In this particular instance, we're going to be direct bonding our NC182 to the substrate. So um, I know that's a little bit different than a lot of tile installers are used to. They're used to using a mud mix and they have a pre-slope and then a, uh, a, a, uh, a pan liner and then they're gonna do their mud mix and stuff on top of that. So in this particular instance, we're direct bonding. So I, I, we need to give uh, Nick a hard time here. I know he's not, a, not, not traditionally from the floor prep industry, but you don't just pour the primer on the floor. So um, uh, generally the rule with the 360 plus primer as with most of our other, uh, all of our other acrylic primers are, we want a thin uniform coat. And typically we're gonna achieve that by putting that into a, a paint pan and then uh, only getting enough material 
so that we don't end up with excessive puddling or drips or runs on the concrete down below. So I just, you can tell Nick's a tile guy. <laughs> he just needs a little help with the priming skills. So, um, so just a thin uniform coat, and this is gonna dry in about a half an hour and be ready for our prep. So this is a non uh, reemulsifiable primer. So that means that after it's dry, uh, you won't, uh, if you get water on the surface of it, it won't reemulsify. So here we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna start by doing the, the different parts of the three-part drain. Um, and this method is gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna see once we start applying the mud and the waterproofing, um, that's different than a traditional pre-slope and, and pan liner. So anything to add there, Nick? No, I think you have it. The three-piece drain is what we see on most commercial job sites and residential. Um, so it's pretty standard practices these days. Okay, so the mud we're gonna use is gonna be called NC-182. This is a fast, uh, no depth limitation um, sloping compound. So it's low slump. Um, you're gonna have very limited work time with it. So Nick took a particular... Sorry, Jared, I, I, when I pause the video, it seems to turn off our microphone. So um, you, you just got cut off. <laughs> well, I just ended up muted. Um, so Nick has a slightly different uh, approach than I would normally take. Since this is such a fast setting compound, what I would normally do is I would normally uh, create a level line around the perimeter, and then I'm I'm going to just go and do the perimeter to that level line and only do about two inches wide around the perimeter. And then I would do the same thing around the drain. See, because the difference between this and a traditional mud, uh, mud cement mix is um, you're only going to have about, you know, 25 20 to 25 minutes of working time with this product before it's completely set up and you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to get it uh, work it anymore. So like I would consider you should really do it in two stages. You should get your drain height around your drain done and then you should get your perimeter done and then you should screed uh, the, the the center section from that. So Nick is going around the perimeter here, um, which is which is a good move. It's just his his shower pan is smaller than most traditional shower pans, so it's easier for him to get it done in the required amount of time. I just think anybody working with this product doing a, a full shower pan, you you need to do it in two stages, or you're going to have uh, nothing but problems getting it. Uh, yeah, you're going to just be frustrated with the performance of the product. Now the product's going to set up really fast, so doing it in two stages. It's not like you have an, an extra, you know, 72 hours or whatever you're going to have to wait after that second coat. This product is going to be ready to apply your waterproofing membrane in about two hours at this depth. So um, it's just going to be a, a little bit different. It's really great for fast tracking, but it's going to require a little bit different working process than a traditional uh, sand cement mix. Absolutely. And, and and I want to point out, guys, that I'm doing this in a more tile traditional method. So I, I am doing a quarter inch per foot. I have roughly 12 inches uh, uh, going there. So it's only a quarter inch from the edge to where uh, the finished tile to the top of the drain would be to set this. And that was hard to uh, portray in a, in a video on this. So um, one thing that I want to point out and make sure everybody understands, traditional four to one sand cement mix that we use in shower pans, requires 72 hours before I can then put a topically applied waterproofing membrane on this. So in a lot of instances, tile guys have to do the mud pan and wait three days before they come back and actually finish the work. So in this method, we're able to keep that moving and be there in about two hours, which is just a, a really phenomenal way to fast track a job site. And if we do the things that Jared talked about in creating our, our, our screed lines, uh, we can really fast track this. You could have one guy prepping all multiple showers in a hospital or in a uh, multifamily setting, and then somebody coming back in and doing the screed. And by the time they're done, they're turning around and starting to waterproof each one of these showers. And we'll go through that whole process. But uh, about have the screed done here. Um, and, and then this was mixed at the low water range. This is something we can mix uh, at different water ranges. So you can have a looser mix or a stiffer mix. I went stiff to build the screeds and then I have to go a little uh, looser to actually fill in the rest of this. 
Yeah, it's also important to note that this product doesn't have any depth limitations. So unlike a sand cement mix where you typically have to start at three quarters of an inch and then you work your way up from there, this you can actually um, use even with an integrated bonding flange and it will it'll maintain its uh, 4,300 PSI even at an eighth of an inch. So it allows you to keep a much lower profile for your perimeter because you don't have uh, a certain depth that you have, thickness that you have to have for it to, to, to meet that compressive strength for the, for, the, for the mud bed. So just allows you to do lower profile style um, shower bed. Uh, yeah, shower beds. Yeah, and that's, that's an excellent point. With traditional mortar beds, you almost need to have an inch and a quarter thickness to, to meet the the limitations of those four to one mixes. So here you can see I mixed it up quite a bit looser so it'll be a lot easier to work with and, and have a idea of uh, being about an inch above the flange here um, when I start to shape and slope this. And, and again, I'm doing this in a more traditional tile method. Most of our floor covering guys are probably gonna approach it a little differently as Jared stated. And uh, we'd be happy to get on site with any of your contractors, any of your guys to walk them through this if you get walk into a, a situation where you, you need a fast track shower mortar bed. Yeah, and, and uh, another point about the 182, um, it has a really unique texture to it, especially when you mix it up a little bit thinner. Um, and it, it starts to stiffen up if you're not working with it. So like if you put it in place and then uh, let it sit for about five minutes, it's gonna really stiffen up on you. But if you continue to work it, you're gonna be able to continue to work it for uh, much longer. So that allows it to like stiffen up on you and then you can strike it smooth like you would with a traditional, with a traditional uh, mud bed. So um, it's also really low slump. So it's gonna hold where you want it to just like a mud bed would but it is gonna feel a little bit stickier on the edge of the trowel because it has some polymers in it and has a much finer aggregate than um, a traditional sand cement mix. Yeah, and if we're talking about guys that are used to four to one, I would I would take four or five bags out to them and, and work with them a little bit to make sure they understand what they're getting themselves into. This is a, a different product than, than traditional tile guys are used to, but it definitely has a, the ability to solve a lot of problems on a job site that tile guys wait a long time for. Typically, like I said, 72 hours. So here I use that screed as my level line around the back. I've sloped it now a quarter inch per foot towards that drain. I'm gonna finish smoothing it out. And then you'll see one of the benefits of this product uh, coming up here when we start cutting around the drain itself. And I do have to say you can get this really nice and smooth and, and look very, very nice for a shower pan. We're just enjoying your work now, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Glad somebody does. Enjoying watching the, the tile guy at work. Okay, so now here Nick's cutting the drain out. So um, the, the main advantage of this no slump uh, product is you're gonna be able to do this after you know just a few minutes. So after about, after about 10 minutes, you'd be ready to cut this drain out and then smooth your edges out. Uh, prepare for your waterproofing. And you really can shape this mortar. It 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 is awesome to work with in that regard. And you know it's set in a way already that with a sponge you can really clean up that edge and make it uh, very smooth and an easy transition for the waterproofing membrane to go down onto that flange uh, and meet that properly. Yeah, but I have actually had, had a customer that did an entire commercial kitchen and they needed to slope down to two drains and it was a renovation. They ended up using a pallet and a half of this material. Um, underneath quarry tile, just because it was, it, it allowed them to go quickly and slope down to their drains. 
And again, we can go to almost nothing. So now we're gonna move on to the waterproofing portion with our HS100. This is a, uh, what we call a liquid applied waterproofing, flexible, ready to use right out of the bucket. Here's the tools we're gonna to be using, um, a, a nice brush roller. Uh, one thing I really do wanna point out about the HS100 here, it's, a, it's in a two, two coat system, but our buckets are shaped as such that we can put a 12 inch roller cover into the bucket without having to take it out. Our, our competition really can't do that. So that is a benefit to this product. Uh, the viscosity of it is a little thicker than some of our competitors. And so I find it to be something that can easily be troweled where a lot of our competitive products are gonna be a little too thin to do that with, but that also allows it to uh, roll out very nicely on this. And we're gonna be looking to get two coats. We're gonna start with a brush and do our changes of uh, transitions, changes of plane. Um, so all corners, all of those higher uh, impact uh, movement areas where we're gonna be doing this. So we're gonna end up coating those areas almost two or three times. Um, and we'll coat the main area two, two coats minimum. So at least probably about three times on the changes of planes and transitions. Again, this is gonna dry first coat in about an hour. Second coat is gonna be in between an hour and two hours uh, to fully cured out and ready to go. Um, and here we're just making sure we get plenty of material in those corners. These are the areas where we see the most failures in products. So we wanna really make sure that these changes of plane get addressed and get a lot of material added to them. Yeah, and as a note, you know, we don't we don't require priming underneath this, but if you're concerned about pinholing and s some really absorbent concrete boards um, will will cause will cause some pinholing just because they're super absorbent, right? And it make you have an extra coat of the the waterproofing. Yeah. Primers, the primer is much less expensive, and if you can hit the the surface of the concrete board with the primer, it dries faster, and it's gonna it'll cost you about six cents a square foot instead of another, you know, I don't know, fifty cents a square foot for another coat of waterproofing. So it's you know it it's just a less expensive, um, faster way to to uh, potentially avoid some problems. Not required, and for a lot of substrates, um, you're not gonna see pinholing. But just for super absorbent substrates, it's a it's a it's a way to get uh, improved product performance. And guys, that's something most tile setters aren't super familiar with in priming properly and why we prime. So that's a great time to educate tile and stone installation companies uh, because they don't understand priming. They understand it a little bit better because of leveling uh, being more prevalent today than it has been. But most of them don't understand the benefit of a primer on most projects. As a former in commercial installer, it could have made my life easier a lot of times. Um, here you can see I just applied some fiberglass mesh. It is not required anything under an eighth of an inch. Anything over an eighth of an inch, we're going to require the mesh to go in there or that we patch that beforehand with thin set or a patch. 182 could even do that and, and still keep you moving. Um, you see I embedded in into the wet HS100 and now I'm rolling back over the top of it. In the tile world, we call this cheap insurance. We do do this, a lot of installers do this on every project because of habit, but again, it's not required. John, I saw you ask that question, so I wanted to make sure it's very clear. Not required, but it is a nice cheap insurance policy. We currently don't have a fiberglass mesh to go in there, uh, but there are plenty of them out there and we're hoping to add that to our, our system soon. Um, I also want to add that this is fully compliant to work with uh, the topical sheet membranes like our HydroStop. So these will work together. So you can use our HydroStop seam tape in this area as well, and then just uh, overlap it by two inches with the HS100 if you want that. We even have a peel and stick version that is a lot faster than uh, any of our competition. So now that we have the the changes of plane done and right around the drain done in that first coat. And the one area was with mesh, but uh, again, not required under an eighth of an inch. We're gonna go ahead and roll the, uh, the main areas. And again, trying to get a nice even coat. I don't wanna be able to read through this. Uh, we're looking between uh, 15 and 20 wet mills. We're gonna show you the wet mill gauge here in a minute. But again, see how easy that that roller goes right into that bucket. I don't need a separate tray to work from this bucket. I can go right there. Um, that right there makes life a little easier for the installer and, and that makes a happy installer.
again, you yeah, can see the application. Yeah, and what? Go ahead. Yeah, Josh. yeah. We're we're just looking for a uniform code, just a uniform code. Um, but like Nick said, we don't want to be able to read anything through there. So if for some reason you can read USG concrete board through through your through your uh, waterproofing, you need more waterproofing. Yeah, in your first coat, you might be able to vaguely see some of that, but your second coat should absolutely block that out completely. Um, we're going to get about 47 square feet per gallon. So a lot of guys are able to kind of measure out what that looks like. So we're going to put that uh, measurement there and make sure that we're hitting those numbers, or we can use a wetness mill gauge, um, which we'll show you in a second on how that actually works to make sure we're getting enough of the waterproofing applied uh, out there to create that continuous waterproof coat. There's the wetness mill gauge. Um, we're going to be looking between the, the 14 and the 20 there. It's really hard to see with the camera, not quite focusing in on there. So I apologize, but uh, we'd be happy to demonstrate this live with you and your contractors on a job site, wherever that may be. Um, so now uh, we're going between the two there. I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the wall and I'm going to move it just ever so slightly just so I know where it hits. So I'm trying to hit between those two and I'm going to lay it out there. And if you can see, there's a little dot there by the big glob, and that shows me that I got my mill coverage. So we were talking about pinholing and priming. That was an example of what those pinholes look like and what we don't want to see. But with real thirsty backer boards, you can see that. Another time we might see that is with um, moisture in our, in our slab. So if guys get on a mortar bed too soon, not necessarily our product, but a four to one sand and cement mix, they get on it too soon, you can see the pinholing and blistering potentially. So with ours and pinholing is really easy. We're just going to go ahead and get a nice coat over that. And on the second coat, you're, you're not going to have that problem again. But a, a coat of primer can really help that as well. Again, you see me starting and, and pre-treating the changes of plane again with a nice thick coat before we go back to coat the main areas one more time. Yeah, and this is, this application is to somewhat is different than what most tile guys are used to because the the divot method is not very common. So using your roll-on uh, membrane down uh, on the lower part of the two-stage drain is just not very common. We we see um, I've seen all sorts of things done incorrectly, but this is a way that actually meets uh, meets the plumbing codes and the uh, requirements of the TCNA um tcna guidelines so um, yep. this is a way that we can do it and make sure from a liability perspective everything's covered because uh as we all know showers are high liability item and you know bold and all the other things that come from a leaky shower are just bad news absolutely and this is a way to keep our waterproofing as close to the tile surface as possible and that keeps the most amount of moisture out of our tile assembly in a traditional uh shower we have a corolloid pan that has a pre-slope underneath it we attach the the corolloid pan to that drain body down there and then we put another layer of mud over the top of it um, that mud is always going to have some moisture to it and if those weep holes in the drain get plugged uh, that water can actually wick back up the wall and in that traditional uh, corolloid pan system a lot of guys weren't doing those properly with a vapor membrane behind the wall and causing a lot of issues in mold and mildew growth that can happen when that moisture goes. I've had had it where moisture actually wicked up the wall three feet and I cut out by the wall or the bottom of the pan and water ran out of the wall. So here we've put together our three-piece drain. We're done. Um, I've siliconed the top flange on. I'm going to now lower my drain down to where my tile height is going to be roughly. I'm going to fill that then in with some pea gravel underneath there to keep my weep holes from uh, getting clogged up, which is one of the big things that does happen in these showers. And again, this is a really nice way to, to do it so we don't have that same issue. See the pea gravel in? I'm going to go ahead and come back with our, our 182, and I'm going to fill it in real quick. This can be done with thin set as well, uh, but again, uh, 182 is a, a rapid drying material so we can keep the job moving. Yeah, and what's nice is since the, the 182 is going to dry in about um, about an hour um, at this depth, 
it's going to it's going to really speed up your your waterproofing over the top of it so um i mean a thin set could take hours and hours and hours to dry you're coming back the next day to put the, the little coat of waterproofing over the top here but what's nice with the 182 is it just makes it streamlines the whole process i'd like to add that the 182 can be added we can put some sand in there we can go 50 percent weight by uh by volume so uh, we can do 12 and a half pounds of sand into a, a bag of 182 so for a tile guy that gives them a little more of that traditional feel than he's had uh, with the uh, four to one mix. So uh, we can actually extend it out that way too. But HS100, the waterproofing membrane guys is also uh, fully uh, approved as a pan liner traditional way. So it can go over a pre-slope um, in, in a traditional method as well, not just in this method, I just, Think that more tile guys are moving to to a method like this to keep that waterproofing uh, closer to the surface of the assembly. So here we'll put another two coats of the HS100 on uh, around the drain, and we're ready to then start our tile and stone installation. Kind of therapeutic watching this all happen. So here it is all done. Uh, you can see this OT drain has some extra weep holes built into it. Um, that makes it a little unique uh, to our other products out there. But uh, that is the main basis of the system. And now we're ready to move on to the actual installation of our tile and stone. Uh, today we did not go into that, but uh, we uh, we want to quickly talk about the next steps. The next step is going to be laying out our tile and stone and installation. We keep that extremely simple with our program. We have three thin sets. We don't have 25 like some of our other competitive uh, competitors out there. So we make this really simple. CX20 is our day in day out mortar. It is not an entry level product. This is a non-sag medium bed mortar that can be used on walls, ceilings with large format tiles. This is what can do about 95% of your day in day out business. So uh, if you have somebody that just is looking for a good everyday mud, CX-20 will do about 95% of what you're gonna do. Uh, we move up to our CX-30. This is gonna be a higher polymer content. It's gonna be a little faster curing as well. Um, we talk about 24 hours is what contractors kind of work from. And a contractor 24 is if I leave the job site at 3 p.m., and I've worked all day there at 7 a.m. the next morning. This is 24 hours. That's not how most mortars cure out. One great thing about our CX-20 is that it has a pot life of two and a half hours, an open time of 20 to 30 minutes. That's actually when it's out on the floor. And I, the time before grouting, it's not a rapid, but it kind of reacts that way. So for walls, I can grout in six hours. And for floors, it's going to be about 12 hours. So that's a very fast time frame. And again, that product is a uh, ISO C2 TES1, meaning that it actually will give a little more flexibility. So when we have glass, we really like to move into that type of material um, and some of those things that expand and contract more than a standard porcelain. For jobs, just like we need to fast track, like we did the NC182, we have the CX33 by Turbo, um, and this is gonna be our rapid material. This is gonna be consistent that they have about 45 minutes of pot life and it's going to set so they can install the grout in two and a half hours. A little bit longer on the white, so that's nice when you're working with glass, it's gonna be a little more intricate, but with our gray, it's gonna be at two and a half hours. Again, all these come in, in our uh, two colors, white and gray, depending on the job you're gonna be working on. And then we have our Uzen Extra Color uh, Grout, and that is going to be our high performance product. That is gonna be moving to a 0.7, Right now it's 0.6 with a lot of 0.7 features and benefits. We're able to make it 0.7. So uh, new inventory coming in from Germany is gonna be that. You're kind of the first to really get that knowledge out there. So uh, this is a high performance. What's great about it, comes in two 10 pound bags. We use the finest raw materials. And I mean fine as in the size of the sand in this, uh, in the industry. So uh, really excited to, to see what you guys think of all these things and hope that this was a, a beneficial uh, 
webinar for you. So again, this is the, the whole drain assembly. This is what we're trying to achieve. And then our family of products, you know us for our patches, leveling, moisture mitigation. And again, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, Jared, you might be on, on mute again, but uh, thank you all. If you have any questions, concerns, please reach out to us. That's what we're here for. We want to get on site with you and your contractors, make sure they're being successful with our products. Yeah, and as always, feel free to feel free to contact your local reps as well. Um, they're very helpful, and they'll be able to get out there on those job sites with you. Awesome, guys. Gary or Jeff Crenshaw, do you guys have anything else you'd like to add today? Thank you, Nick. This is, can you hear me? This is Gary. Absolutely. We can hear you, Gary. Guys, if I just wanted to add, if you have any questions, um, you could type them in the question area. And with all of us on the line right now, we'll be able to answer those easily. If you do not have any questions, we appreciate your time. Um, we know it's, you know, kind of mid morning and it's, it's tough to get away from all your customer calls. And we just want to say, we really appreciate it. And with us working with Nick and Jeff Moore, there definitely will be more to come. Absolutely guys. Thank you so much for your time as Gary put out there. Um, we know it's valuable. Thank you for learning some more. Please let us know if we can help you in any way. Yep, thanks guys. Nick, let's hold tight for about three more minutes to see if any questions pop up and then we can end it then. Absolutely. Two more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just want, you know, I appreciate everybody jumping on here. And don't forget from what Jared said, you could reach out to your local rep, um, either myself, you know, for EJ Walsh, you actually have four uh, at your fingertips. You have myself, uh, you have Jared, you have Scotty, who covers Wisconsin and Iowa, and you now have Josh Freiberg that handles the Lexington in Louisville, Columbus, soon to be Columbus and Cincinnati location as well. So if you guys need anything for, from us, please reach out. We can do this same thing in front of your customers. We prefer a job site to do things like this on, but by all means, please reach out to us for help. But looks like we're up, um, no questions. So we, oh wait, we do have oh. one. I'm sorry. File size limitations. We don't have that with our uh, this system or our thin sets. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that, but uh, yeah, we don't have tile size limitations with uh, what we just showed you. Um, our CX30 is excellent for the large thin panel products that are now what five foot by 11 feet almost in size. So no, we, we don't have any of those uh, limitations. Yeah, and I'm guessing that you're asking the difference between 20 and 30. And I'll just tell you, I just had a phone call, um, a meeting with Jim yesterday with one of his customers. And typically I tell the customers use CX20 on everything. And if they get to a panel installation from what Nick said, that's pretty much where I switch to uh, CX30. Um, now it exactly doesn't need to be a panel for big size. Let's say there's a crazy, you know, uh, 48 by 40 and 48 porcelain or something like that that needs to go on the wall. I'm probably going to uh, step up to 30 on that. So anything very large size, I'm going to step up to um, 30. But what we're seeing typically is a 12 by 24 and CX20 can put that up all day long. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, another one here is can you create a bundle promo where we see all the materials for a, a standard shower? Um, absolutely. I'm not quite sure I fully understand what you're asking there, uh, Robert, but uh, uh, get with your, your local rep and we can we can definitely put something together on that. And, and we're going to be doing some major updates to our HS100 data sheet that should be coming out in the next few weeks. So uh, we will be more apples to apples with all our competition. We've done some 
some great internal testing with that product over the last six months since I've kind of came aboard. Yeah, and one more thing about the panel systems and the CX-20 versus CX-30. I actually had a panel system that went over in Ohio and they recommend, I recommended the CX-30 to them. They decided to use the CX-20 and they just had some problems with it um, just from the workability of the product and the, the no sag characteristics. So I would, uh, as, as we start talking about large panel systems, I would definitely uh, steer people to the CX-30. Absolutely. You got a, a lot better product, a lot more polymer added to it. CX-20 is a great material, but uh, it does have limitations when it comes to some of those performance factors. But your, most of your day in, day out at installations will do that. When we get to a little higher end product and stuff, we really want to go. But the, the tile size limitations, it, it's a, a good thin set. If you can get it spread and placed in, in a, a reasonable amount of time, uh, it'll work just fine. Yeah, and I can't say enough about CX33, right? So let's talk about that really fast. You know, CX33 is EJ Welch's most sold thin set. Um, and the reason is because we give you that extended pot life and then that quick dry for, for grouting. So I didn't realize how horrible the, the <laughs> competition was in this category of fast setting um thin sets oh yeah um, you got to get it out of the bucket in 10 minutes or it sets up on you <laughs> i mean i mean the, the the it's a night and day difference between the cx33 and other other rapid set thin sets you just have so much more bucket time um it creates less stress when you're trying to install the tile yeah and, and one more thing to add to that guys i had a bag and i don't recommend this obviously but we had a two-year-old bag at our training center because we're not operating schools right now and I mixed it up against all the competitive rapids I could buy locally and are still set exactly in two and a half hours. And it's not that I place it and I can't move it in five to 10 minutes. I still can adjust that tile uh, 10, 15 minutes after I put it. With most rapids, like Jared just said, it is set. That tile is not moving. We don't have that issue with our CX-33. It is an amazing product. And that bag size, 27 and a half pounds is a great working size for most of these applications. Another awesome place to use its backsplashes. Guys can get in and out in one day versus making it a two-day process to do a backsplash. Yeah, and the and a lot of the a lot of the rapid sets also have a a rougher aggregate to them. The CX33 still has a super fine aggregate that's uh, similar uh, to the CX30 uh, in the in the aggregate size. And it just creates, it's just a really nice working experience with, uh, with the CX-33. For sure, for sure. So we're saying if you want to have some really quick success, I would find out in your markets who is purchasing rapid thin sets. And we call that product the game changer. And uh, you, will, you will see that extremely fast. So we got another question, guys. Uh, if we would level on a concrete surface, would NC 150 be a good option, or could we use uh, uh, Fast Track for 172 um, and larger installs? Um, yeah, with with the size of tiles today, we absolutely recommend that we we level first. You'll you'll save yourself as an installer a lot of time adjusting tiles, and uh, you'll have that flat surface. Um, which we require and with large format that's 15 inches on any edge of the tile is considered large format these days and we have to have an eighth and ten for floor flatness level i don't see concrete floors ever meeting that i'm sure uh, jared and gary would agree as well yeah and, and one of the things you run into um with when you're doing a tile application over the leveler the time frame for you to be able to install your thin set over the top of a like 150 is much shorter than it would be over to install moisture sensitive goods so the difference between 150 and 172 is not that great when we're talking about a tile a ceramic style installation where you're using a thin set so you know you might be able to get away with using the 150 or the 170 and not have to go to the 172 on a fast track just because you know shortly after it's walkable it, you'll be able to apply the thin set to it so now if you need to install an anti-fracture or waterproofing membrane 
for fast track, you might want to do the 172 because that will have the lower moisture content that will allow you to apply that acrylic over the top much faster. Great questions, Robert and John. Thank you so much for adding to uh, to the conversation. I really appreciate it. Well, guys, I think uh, I think we've answered all the questions that have popped up. Again, we appreciate you all taking the time today. We know it's a uh, it's asking a lot and uh, we really appreciate it and can't wait to get out in front of you guys and your customers. So uh, uh, at that, guys, I'm going to I'm going to close it down unless you got anything else. Um, you got, we had a question come up with steam showers. Uh, oh, I just popped that. There. Yeah, yeah. So with steam showers, um, we're going to want to use a product called HS200, which is a cementitious, um, cementitious waterproofing uh, membrane or we're gonna to wanna to use our sheet membrane. So those would be the two options. The HS100 is not rated for steam showers. Well, and then that's not necessarily true. The biggest problem uh, with steam showers is do they have a vapor membrane behind the backer board? Mm -hmm. And in a lot of times uh, today, the tile installer is not installing the backer board. Uh, we walk into it, especially commercially speaking, it's already done. So we don't know if that membrane's back there and tied in properly to a corolloid pan or if we have to build it that way. So the, the most reasonable option in my mind is to use our, our waterproofing hydrostop. It is rated for a steam shower. We know it's that vapor membrane and it's it's that out of the box. There is no questions about it. That installs with thin set. And, and it goes up kind of like wallpaper does, but that can still be a fast track installation as well. Yeah, and with the steam showers, we're gonna wanna use the, the CX-33 or the CX-30, not the CX-20. Just like, we would treat it just like a submerged application as well. Those, the CX-33 or CX-30, yep. you, you can use that thin set. Awesome questions. All right. Well, again, <laughs> without any more questions, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. If you have further questions that we didn't answer or you didn't want to ask in front of everybody, please reach out to your, your local rep or ourselves. We're happy to uh, work with you and answer anything you have. Uh, thank you so much for the time today, guys. Uh, we know it's hard to get away, but uh, increasing your knowledge base will, will never hurt you when we're, we're trying to get out there and sell it. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Jared. Absolutely. Let's see.